Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another episode of the show. And a uh, few things are going on here today. Um, I should have set that up a little bit better. Got a new camera light. Or not new. I got a camera light. Uh, not sure how effective it's going to be because when you look at, when I turned it on, it doesn't really feel like it illuminates much, but it is kind of bright when I'm looking at it. So we'll see how that operates. A few other things. Um, before we get into the wines, I uh, want to show... This little thing. This is why you get a wireless microphone. <laughs> All right, so um, this is the grape varietal table, or the wine grape varietal table from DeLong. If you look at my website, you know, you know the website, right? Everyone goes to it instead of sitting on their couch watching on TiVo. Uh, if you go to the website, uh, my website, click on the little link about DeLong, it'll take you to their website. Uh, you can purchase that. Um, what you'll get is you'll get um, you'll you have two things you can get. You can just get the the varietal chart, or you can get like the deluxe thing. Comes with um, the uh, table here, with the little grape guide. Um, pretty cool. Just gives you each of the grapes, and uh, also has a few other um, uh, informational things in here. Uh, suggest you get it. I got it framed. Uh, I'm doing. I didn't spend a lot of money in the frame. I just went to Target and got. Uh, you know, whatever basic frame that fits it. The other thing I did was um, to help me with all these reviews, uh, and if I go out somewhere to do review, as I went ahead and got their little, their little wine notes thing. You don't have to do that. You can just get a piece of paper and make your own little thing, but it's got kind of a, uh, a nice standardized thing. Uh, the Court of Master Sommeliers and the uh, Society of Wine Educators also have like tasting grids. Um, hopefully when I get the um, database up and running on the website uh, it'll be very much like what, what's going on and this is also to kind of give me some records and get my database back on track. Uh, I'm also putting everything into the iPhone. Uh, I'm using an application called Bento uh, for the Mac. It's their kind of consumer grade database program so um, uh, trying to get back into doing that. So uh, some things here and then when you buy the little wine notebook you get a little little chart here. It's kind of like the, the, the aroma wheel, but a little bit different. They claim it's better. I didn't buy it because they said it was better than the aroma wheel, but anyway, so uh, I got all this, and uh, we're going to do some wine today. So let's hop right into it because I've spent a lot of time talking about um, all this stuff, and uh, boom, let's get right into the wine here. All right, so you can already see what we're going to do here. Let's just go ahead and get a little closer up of this. We've got the 2010 Yellowtail, yes, Yellowtail, uh, the wine that really kind of put uh, Australia on the map for the average wine drinker, okay? Um, but their 2010 Riesling, and that's why I bought it, Riesling. I'm like, okay, they've really expanded their lineup. I mean, what what I, I mean, I used to, I, I, I liked Yellowtail. I, I don't think it's a bad grape, but what I used to have all the time was a Shiraz Cabernet. You know why? Because it had a purple label. I like purple. Um, I used to like that. And I would sometimes get the Shiraz, uh, Shiraz Grenache. Uh, the other things I didn't really buy much of uh, just because, I don't know, at the time I was really getting into wine and drinking Yellowtail because it was cheap. By the way, $4.97 at HEB. That's why I bought it all the time because I get it for 4 to $6. Um, those are, and just, just this plain Shiraz. I mean, those are the varietals I, I kind of keyed in on. Um, I mean, as you've watched for a while, uh, Chardonnays, I don't do a lot of Chardonnays. Not that I don't like them, it's just not a favorite varietal. Uh, Cabernet Sauvignons, uh, I do tend to do a decent amount of them just because they're out there. But again, it's not my favorite varietal. Again, nothing wrong with it. Um, Shiraz is, you know, kind of that varietal that I kind of fell in love with, along with Zinfandel. They, they just have something different about them, and I guess it's what it is, the difference. You know, the thing that's 
that's not everybody you know uh, keyed in on. Now, of course, you know Zinfandel's become big, Shiraz has become big, but um, when I first started really getting into it, it was like those those extra varietals that nobody talked about. All right, so let's get into the wine. Um, you know, typical color. It's kind of straw color. It's not really. Um, uh, it's it's not really intense. I mean, it is a riesling. It's not going to be a really deep uh, color on on the uh, when you're looking at it. Though it also shouldn't be like really watery thin. Um, but I would call it kind of straw yellow. I mean, you're not going to be able to tell the actual color that I'm seeing here. Plus, I'm looking at it. You know, okay, this is yellow. This is red. You know, I don't really have anything white to put this under. So we're just kind of going to go with it. The, the curtains behind here are kind of yellowish so it's all gonna have a yellow tint anyway all right so um and it's clear which it should be uh, most wines you're going to have are clear so let's just circle my things okay it's color depth and i'm going to say i'm going to say it's medium i'm going to say it's straw yellow and i'm going to say it's clear aroma intensity this is also practice for when i start doing blind tasting soon Uh, so for the intensity, it's it's moderate. Um, it's I definitely can smell stuff. It's not powerful or they ha they call it aromatic. Um, I mean, it could be aromatic, could be kind of that moderate aromatic. Now, what do I get off the nose? Um, they talk about development. Well, I know this is young wine. I know the vintage. Just it's young, so that's already there. All right, so aromas. Kind of the, the citrus, a bit of citrus, maybe some stone fruit. Um, and if you don't know what stone fruit is, that seems like uh, apricots and nectarines, not nectarines, April, like, yeah, no, yeah, nectarines, apricots, that type of stuff because they have a big stone seed in them. That's what a stone fruit is. So I get that type of citrus, stone fruit type of thing. Maybe a bit of peach. Let's see what they say. Uh, hints of orange blossom that linger on the finish. Yeah. Okay. Let's taste it, see how it is. First of all, let's talk about dry and sweet. It's a Riesling. Riesling can be everywhere. They can be really dry to really sweet. Um, I'm going to call this kind of a kind of an off dry. You know, they they on their little website, which you know I love. I love when they have all this great information. They have light fruit and sweet. I don't really call it sweet. It might be an off dry to medium sweet. We'll go medium sweet since that's what it's supposed to be sweet. We we'll go with medium sweet body. It's, it's definitely light body. Um, acid. It's got a little bit of acidity, but um, it's it's not really. I'm gonna call it flabby, to be honest. Um, at least the descriptions that they have here. Of course, no tannins. Balance. Now, this is really where you're going to rate your wines, right? Is it tasty, but you know, with acid, um, with the mouthfeel, the overall balance. That's really where you look at wines. Not just oh, it tastes good, but does it does it incorporate everything? I'm going to say the balance is it's just kind of there. It's not it's not like a well balanced wine, but it's it's not like disjointed. Um, so I'm going to say fair. It's not unbalanced. It's not good. I mean, they only have three. <laughs> There's only three things here to choose from. Flavor intensity is moderate, and the flavors. I guess a little bit of orange in there. Um, so you got the citrus. And I'd say orange and peach. 
that's that's what I'm getting out of it. Um, very short finish. So you know, it's 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 an okay wine. You know, I, I for five dollars, you you don't necessarily you're not gonna expect you know ninety five point wines. Um, you know, it's it's five dollars. It's summertime officially now, and if you're living here in Texas, it's already in the hundreds. You know, it's been it's been hitting hundred degree weather. You know, chill it a little bit. It's easy drinking, but honestly, there's I, I don't find there's really much to it. I mean, they say it's luscious and lively, bursting with fresh fruit. Not really, not for me, not for me. Um, I, I I'll be honest, I really couldn't. If you told me this was a Sauvignon Blanc I, I, from Australia, I'd be like, okay. I don't feel like it's got anything that's, you know, other than the fact that it doesn't have more of a lemon lime taste to it, like a Sauvignon Blanc would. Um, it's got more of the stone fruit. Um, I would just think it would be just kind of a, a, an ordinary Sauvignon Blanc. Score wise, I don't know. I'd give it. I'd give it an 82. I mean, it's not a bad wine, and for five dollars, you're not going to go wrong buying it. But um, but yeah, if you're out there and you need something cool and refreshing, but you're not really worried about flavors, um, go ahead and buy it. It's cheap. But I think there's a lot more on the market out there for Rieslings that are probably a couple dollars more that you can get that are going to be a better wine for you. All right, so um, that's going to do it for today's show. Uh, I'm trying to wrap it up real quick. Make sure you visit the website. If you're not someone that's going to the website, you're going to see over here on the, to your perspective, the right-hand side, um, we got the donate button. Send me to France. Well, I'm going, but you know, uh, help with the help with the expense of that. It's going to be an expensive trip. Um, you can donate, do a one-time donation. You can also do a, a recurring donation, five dollars uh, a month. That's half a bottle of wine, or one of these bottles of wine. Um, and of course, there's other ads in there. Check them out. Uh, if you haven't been checking it out recently, if you didn't watch the last three episodes with Fall Creek Vineyards, please, please watch them. I know they're 30 minutes long. I can be a little bit long. Find some time to, to relax. Pop it on your iPhone or, or iPod. Relax on the couch, on the laptop, uh, or send it through to your whichever device you have to connect to your TV. If you've got an Xbox or you got a PlayStation or you got your Apple TV or anything else, or you have a Roku or TiVo, um, you can seek them out. Um, plus, some of the other TV manufacturers, I'm, I'm all distributing to that stuff. So look for it. If you're watching your couch, but come back to the website to leave comments and. You know, contact me and uh, other kinds of stuff. Anyway, we'll see everybody again next time.